What's up guys, my name is Brandon and iOS 13.1.3 was just released a few days ago and if you're following me on Twitter or Instagram, you would know that I was actually in LA at Vid Summit when the software did get released. So I was not able to cover it on day one, but I do have a little bit more information about the software now since I have been using it for a little bit longer than I normally do when I make these what's new videos on the new software. So of course, in this video, we're gonna cover what's new in iOS 13.1.3. We're also gonna discuss how the previous version, iOS 13.1.2, has been performing. We're gonna cover iOS 13.2 beta 3 and more. So taking a look at the size of this update, you can see here on my iPhone 11 Pro, it came in at 145.6 megabytes, so a very small update. And this is pretty much across the board on iPads and iPhones. It's pretty much under 200 megabytes for everybody. So just right off the bat, you could tell that there's not gonna be a ton of new features however there are a ton of changes and bug fixes in this update and it is a very crucial update for you guys but before we get into all of that let's go ahead and check out the build number and the modem firmware as well so settings general about 13.1.3 you can see there the build number is 17a878 and if we scroll down a little bit more to the modem firmware you can see that has also been updated to 1.01.19 so if you're having lte issues connectivity issues those may be solved here in ios 13.1.3 so now what's new in ios 13.1.3 and why is it so important to update and that's because just like ios 13.1.2 there are a ton of major bugs Bug fixes. Now the first bug fix here in iOS 13.1.3 has to do with the phone application and basically an issue where your phone would not ring or vibrate when you were getting a phone call. So like an incoming call, you would never get any kind of vibration or sound when that call was coming through. And I believe I mentioned this multiple times on Twitter. I've had this issue for a while now. So it's great to see that finally addressed here in iOS 13.1.3. I have also tested it out and it definitely seems to be working so far. I've not had that issue since installing this update. Now iOS 13.1.3 also fixes a pretty major issue that a lot of people faced when they got the Apple Watch Series 5, and that was the inability to connect their Apple Watch to their iPhone. So for some reason in iOS 13, I think specifically 13.1.1 and 13.1.2, for some reason you could not pair your phone to your watch, your watch to your phone. And that was just one of the fixes for the Apple Watch in 13.1.3 in correlation to the iPhone because another issue that's been fixed is that notifications now work 100% of the time on the Apple Watch. I've had numerous people tell me, I haven't had this myself, but numerous people have told me that notifications just are not getting pushed to their Apple Watch. So 13.1.3 should solve that and you should now get all notifications sent to your Apple Watch. Another issue that's been pretty popular since iOS 13.0 is for some reason the iPhone just disconnects from car Bluetooth sometimes. So if you have like a head unit in your car, or even if you just have an integrated system in your car that came from the factory, sometimes your iPhone would just randomly disconnect when it's connected via Bluetooth. So that's been solved here in 13.1.3. Now hopefully it's actually solved this time because iOS 13.1.2 also mentioned something about fixing the issue with disconnecting from car Bluetooth. So hopefully 13.1.3 is the final update to address this. Hopefully it finally fixes it because the last update multiple people on Twitter told me that it didn't actually fix it. So if you use Bluetooth in your car, definitely let me know down in the comment section below if this update did solve an issue, if you were ever having that issue in the first place. We also get a fix for Bluetooth headsets and Bluetooth hearing aids. So now the connection is going to be a lot more reliable and consistent with iOS 13.1.3. Another issue that's been fixed here in iOS 13.1.3 has to do with iCloud transfer. So basically when you would transfer data over from one phone to another, sometimes applications would just not fully load or they would not fully download on on the device that you are transferring data over to. So that's been fixed here in 13.1.3. I personally have not had this issue and I've used this feature multiple times to transfer data over via iCloud, and I've not had that issue, but if you did, that has been fixed here in 13.1.3. And speaking of iCloud backup issues, we also get a fix for voice memos. So sometimes voice memos will not transfer over properly via iCloud backup or iCloud restore. That's been fixed now, so you should have all of your voice memos transferred over successfully. And then you can see there, Apple does also tell us a couple of other fixes that are pretty minor. Fixes an issue that may prevent opening a meeting invite in mail, 
and also resolves an issue where data in the health app may not display correctly after daylight savings time adjusts. And then down here, we do also have a fix for Game Center. It says addresses launch performance for apps that use Game Center. So basically games would launch pretty slow when they relied on Game Center for whatever reason. That has been fixed here in 13.1.3. So yeah, iOS 13.1.3 is a major update to fix a ton of issues. And this goes across all devices, the iPad, the old iPhones included. Just because I have an iPhone 11 Pro here does not mean that these fixes are only for this device. This is actually one of the first updates where I haven't seen a specific iPhone 11 fix. So it seems to be that Apple is focusing on all devices, not just the new iPhone 11s, which is nice to see. Now, as far as performance goes, performance feels about the same. I've been using this here on my iPhone 11 Pro for a few hours now now and it feels exactly the same as 13.1.2 to me now some of the bugs may make it seem a little bit faster if you're having hangups or if you're having any of those issues that I mentioned earlier 13.1.3 of course is going to feel faster and just a little bit more fluid as well so definitely update for that reason alone as well and in terms of battery life battery life also seems to be really good here on iOS 13.1.3 I've been doing a lot of research on Twitter and forums and things like that Obviously, since I have not had 13.1.3 installed since day one, I have to go off of basically some others, you know, reports of battery life. And some people are saying that the battery life is improved from 13.1.2. I was not aware that 13.1.2 actually caused some battery drain for some devices. I never had that, but apparently 13.1.3 will fix some of those battery drain issues. And I also wanted to talk about the mail application because the mail application seems to be doing just fine. It was actually fine in 13.1.2. This is something that I've been closely monitoring because the mail application has just really been giving me issues since iOS 13.0, the very first beta. But 13.1.2, I think the mail application, I did not have one issue with with it at all so 13.1.3 i would figure is going to be the exact same as 13.1.2 if not better so if you're still not even on ios 13.1.2 and you're having mail issues i would definitely update to 13.1.3 right away. And that's pretty much it for iOS 13.1.3 here. I have been using this on my iPhone 11 Pro, my iPhone 11, and my iPhone 6S here. I really haven't noticed any kind of issues or bugs or anything like that. Nothing with the volume HUD, everything seems fine there. Uh, the app switcher, the control center, everything seems fine for me. I really haven't noticed any bugs. Now, some people do report some minor bugs, some really minor bugs that are more related to like third-party applications. And that's mostly just to do with those applications not updating their app to be compliant with the new software. So if you guys have any issues that are not related to apps and are actually related to like iOS 13.1.3, if you're having any kind of issues, bugs, anything that I didn't mention in this video, definitely let me know down in a comment below. But so far, so good for iOS 13.1.3 here. I would definitely recommend you do update since this does fix a lot of bugs. Now, if for some reason you never had any of the bugs I mentioned in this video and your connectivity is fine, your battery is fine, everything is perfect for you on iOS 13.1.2, I would not update to 13.1.3 because we all know how that goes. A new software update, even though it fixes a lot of things, could also break some things. And you know, you may end up with some bugs that you did not have previously. So if iOS 13.1.2 or whatever version you're on now is like literally perfect and you don't have any issues, then go ahead and stay there. There's no point in updating until you know you run into some issues or there's a new feature that comes out that you really want or something like that. But if you're like most people and you did have issues and you kind of just want to make everything a little bit better, 13.1.3 is a great software update that you should definitely consider upgrading to. And I did also want to briefly discuss iOS 13.2 beta 3 for those of you on the beta program. So you can see here, I did download this on my iPhone 11. It came in at a pretty small 221 megabytes here and that was pretty common across the board for all devices and if we go ahead and take a look at the build number here for this update you can see there 17b5077a and then down here for the modem firmware you can see we did get that updated as well it's now 1.02.13 so if you're having connectivity issues which for some reason a lot of people were having connectivity issues in 13.2 beta 1 and beta 2 apparently a lot of people are also reporting that beta 3 fixes that and it's actually a pretty significant difference. So if you were having any kind of connectivity issues with either Wi-Fi or LTE and you're on the 13.2 beta, definitely upgrade to beta 3 if you have not done so already. Now, as far as visual features or changes here in 13.2 beta 3, you're not going to notice anything new. Everything is just on the back end. A lot of bug fixes, a lot of just stability fixes as well. And that's pretty much expected once you get to around the third beta, especially of a point release. So one of the things that's been fixed here is when you're in dark mode and 
you go to type something, for some reason the predictive text would sometimes actually show up in light mode or normal mode. That would not be in the dark mode. It would look really weird and very tacky. It would just be like white behind those letters and the letters would be black. It would look really weird. So that's been fixed here in 13.2 beta 3. Also the cropping photos issue has been fixed here in 13.2 beta 3. So this has been going on for a little while now. And basically what would happen is you would crop a photo and you'd save it and then you go to post it on like social media or something like that and it would actually show up as the original it wouldn't show like you actually ever even cropped it so that's been fixed here in beta 3 if you do crop an image or a video or whatever it's going to show up when you go to post it on social media or wherever you want to post it i've also noticed that a lot of applications and even websites are starting to use sign in with apple now so one of the first ones i noticed was best buy you can see down there sign in with apple is now showing up on the website and also in the application we also have sign in with apple appearing in a lot of different applications like the giphy application all trails and a ton of other ones as well are starting to use sign in with apple and i would definitely recommend you guys start signing in with apple instead of signing in with like your email or with facebook or twitter whatever you use i would start shifting over to sign in with apple it's just a lot more secure and i'm sure there are other minor bug fixes as well but those are pretty much the ones that i've been made aware of and that i've noticed myself now people are still having ram management issues in this third beta that could have something to do with the applications you're using just not fully optimized for the beta that's pretty common uh, but a lot of people are reporting having bad ram management for whatever reason now in terms of battery life and performance it feels pretty much the same as beta 2 to me if anything is improved it's the performance and it may seem a little bit smoother and that's pretty much expected with these beta releases as you progressively go into the beta stages it starts to get more and more stable and you start to notice less bugs but as far as battery life battery life i would assume is probably going to be the exact same as it was in beta 2 but i will let you know if i do do a follow-up i'll probably just end up covering 13.2 to beta 3 my experience with it when beta 4 comes out which should be next week now as far as the final release for ios 13.2 i would expect to see that in the final week of october or the first week of november so we may see it on the week of the 28th or the week of november 4th it seems that most of the bugs have been fixed and it seems that we've gotten all the features and changes that we're going to be getting in ios 13.2 of course the big ones being deep fusion the new emojis and things like that and that's pretty much everything for ios 13.2 beta 3 if you notice anything else any other changes bug fixes or anything like that let me know down in a comment below but anyways guys a lot of content coming out very very soon so definitely stay tuned for that of course make sure you are subscribed with that bell icon click so you don't miss any of the videos because youtube likes to act weird sometimes and not push my videos out but anyways guys thanks again for watching the video and i'll see you soon